God bless you on this day that God has given us. And today is a special Sunday. I'm very excited as you will see less of me and more of the people at First United Methodist Church. And we are going to have a moment today to really think of those individuals who have lost loved ones because of COVID-19, as well as all those that are going through this pandemic. And so I hope this service becomes something where it brings healing, it brings peace, and a sense of understanding for you to continue with a future that is filled with nothing but hope. And so with that said, uh, let us pray. Oh Lord, our God, as you welcome us into this space, we ask, Lord, that you bless all our hearers and those that will see and listen. God, we lift up those that are grieving at this moment because of the loss of their loved ones and those that are having a hard time because of this pandemic, because of losing a job and certain things that are just uncertain these days, Lord. But keep us hopeful and keep us close to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So at this moment, we're gonna sing, Here I Am, Lord as a way of saying, God, allow me to help those that are going through a tough time. the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. The stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Yeah, Lord, is it I? set a feast for them my hand will save finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord, I have heard you call Oh, oh, oh. 
by the Lord of snow and rain. I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Let us experience that reckless love that God has for us. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. And God will always pursue you. That is that prevenient grace. Because He loves you no matter what. He's here for you during this time. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God
Let God's peace and healing come over you at this moment. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 and I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never-ending Reckless love of God. Let the peace of God and His healing come upon you at this moment. For there's nothing that can stop God's grace and His unconditional love. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> I'm not strong enough. I
Cause you're not alone Oh my soul, you're not alone Loves at all times and a relative is born to help in adversity. Proverbs 1717. During this pandemic, we come together with heavy hearts. Our beloved community is suffering through COVID-19 hospitalizations, grieving COVID-19 deaths, and deaths for other reasons, yet we can't come together like we might usually do in memorial. We are struggling through unemployment and hunger, or at best, witnessing our relatives, our friends, and our neighbors cope with our oppressive conditions that the coronavirus has really amplified here in our community and in the country. I invite you to take a deep breath, breathing in slowly and deeply, and ex exhaling out slowly and gently. I invite you to relax your shoulders. You may have been carrying some weight from this week and all the weeks that seem to run together through the pandemic. I invite you to close your eyes and to continue slow, deep breaths. And let's share a moment of silence together. A moment of silence in honor of all we've lost, all those whom we've lost. A moment to collectively grieve, to grieve our relatives, our friends, our neighbors. And if you are so moved, I invite you to meditate on the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Of all the forms of inequality, injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. As we prepare to enter this collective silence, we light six of these candles in honor of the neighbors we shall name in this moment, and the center candle in honor of those who we may not name at this moment whose names we may not even yet know, but who are very much present in our community and in our hearts. Juan Pablo Patejos. Orfelia de Jesus. Benigno Gonzalez, William Schuller, Geoffrey Sanchez. Mario Hernandez.
abundance and peace. Amen. As we grieve this loss of life, the loss of so much in our beloved community, we may also feel gratitude. Um, we feel gratitude for our relatives, our friends, our neighbors, our community, who have come together to support us through this crisis. We are grateful for those friends, like Proverbs 17:17 17, 17 reminds us, that love us during these times, during all times, and for those relatives born to help us through this adversity. I invite you to take another deep breath. And let that breath make space in your heart, space in your chest, space in your belly to accept or recognize at the very least that we may also be experiencing conflict with our friends, with our relatives, with our neighbors during this pandemic. It may be difficult to admit it at this time when we need each other most. It may be difficult to admit it even to ourselves that as we spend more time with one another, with our family members, our roommates at home, we may be experiencing more conflict. We may not be loving each other. We may not be helping each other through this adversity. Through this grief and this gratitude, we may have difficulty coping with that adversity, the adversity within our own hearts and within our own homes. And we must remember for some of us, home is safe and a sanctuary. And for some of us, it is not. For some of us, home is not safe. And for some of us, there is no place that we can call home now. We may be going from relatives' homes to friends' homes. We may be in shelters. We may be on the street. So what then? What now? Um, where do we turn during a pandemic when the adversity is within us and between us? Where do we turn when our places of worship where we might have otherwise found peace? Um, when those doors are closed to us. Where will, do we turn when that friend um, who always knew the right thing to say um, is not available. We can't go visit the home. Where do we turn when we might otherwise have a happy hour with coworkers to kind of ease that stress between work and family? But we can't hang out at the bar after work right now. So there are no easy answers to what then, what now. How do we go on? How do we grieve? Um, the pandemic is not easy. We have to try things, or I don't want to put that weight on us. I invite us to try things to the extent that we can, that we may not have tried before. So maybe now is the time to consider abstaining from alcohol. And exploring what does that feel like in your body and what help might you need to abstain from alcohol and I bring that up because alcohol can sometimes add another combative factor to a home already in conflict maybe now is the time to finally try counseling therapy you've been saying you're gonna do it um, but the therapist doesn't accept your insurance or the therapist just doesn't understand and it's really your spouse's fault anyway. <laughs> well, maybe now is the time. Now is the time. As we think about and honor and respect that some of our neighbors have lost their spouse. What can we do? 
to strengthen and support ourselves so we can be better spouses and support our spouses. And maybe counseling is it. Or maybe, maybe you have been going to church. Maybe you've been tuning in to Pastor Charles um, on Facebook Live and, and even before you were showing up every Sunday. But maybe now is the time to develop a different relationship with your pastor, be that Pastor Charles or, or any other of the um, open-hearted pastors in our community. Um, what does it mean to reach out for pastoral care? Um, what does it mean to call and, and say to your pastor, your priest, your imam, your, um, your rabbi, I don't know how to deal with this. I know for me, an hour on the phone with Father Rod worked miracles several hours at several different times during this pandemic. So maybe that's something you haven't tried before that might work for you now. Before COVID-19, our teenagers dealing with us <laughs> or our children, adult children dealing with us could go to the library or a coffee shop to, to get a break. That's not possible. So what can our teenagers do? How can they get some relief? What can our young adults do to cope during this time? Um, we've seen a lot of creativity on, on social media with TikTok and, and music and art. Maybe now is the time for you to start that journal, for you to pick up that guitar, for you to create a beautiful work of art. That is healing to, that, to your soul. And for some of us, that is our prayer. That is what we offer. We just may have to explore resources that are available, but we didn't have before. Maybe now is the time to start that habit of the weekly hike. Alone in the woods, just you and nature, you and God, you and yourself. Or maybe you and your son, or you and your daughter, or you and your spouse, or you and your dog. And that might be way for you to heal that conflict at home so that we may go back to helping one another through adversity so that we may go back to loving each other through all times while still forgiving and accepting that these times for some of us can be really hard to love through can be really hard to help through and, and that's human So I invite you to share in what ways work for you. Maybe it's something you've always done, cooking for neighbors, tending to your garden, or maybe this summer you'll share tomatoes with some of our food pantries that are in so much need right now. Because something that might work for you might work for others and they hadn't thought about it. And right now, we do need that friend to love us through these times, and we do need that relative, even if it's a chosen family, a church family, not a biological family, to help us through adversity. Amen. Amen. I want to take this time and say thank you for all those people in the community who have been giving uh, to our food pantry here at First United Methodist Church. Uh, we have called their lifeline uh, for it's giving people hope. It's not just hope in food, but hope that there is people with good hearts. And so I just want to say thank you to the community. I want to say thank you to all of you. I want to give a special thanks to those individuals who are working very hard here as they are those are saying to God, here I am to serve your people who are hungry. They're saying pretty much, I'm here to demonstrate that reckless love of God. That even in a time of a pandemic, God is still present through his people. And so uh, thank you to all who continue to offer, who continue to give their tithing. And so you could do it online or you could do it through uh, mail as well. So I just want to say Thank you to you all. So uh, let us uh, get that offering and let us pray over it.
Lord our God, we would just want to say thank you. Not just the offerings of money, but the offerings of food that has come from the community, has come from the church. We just want to say thank you. That the reason why there is hope in the midst of a pandemic is because of the offering of the people. There's those that have offered their, their time and energy as well. And in the midst of this offering, we celebrate and honor them. So we thank you for their gifts and talents as well. That it may continue to bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God, his presence, his strength, him being your rock, be with you and continue you forward to see better and brighter days. Amen.